Whether we like it or not, personal determination is required to build resilience, to become fit for whatever the future may hold. We have to tap inner resources and develop some emotional muscle. It's both a discipline and our responsibility. No one can do it for us. The good news is we're not alone. We are surrounded by survivors who have gone before us, and their examples will help mark the way forward. Their experiences show us that with the right support, everyone can recover and thrive. As we overcome hardship, there's laughter and hope and love waiting for each of us. But it is crucial for us to want those things. Frankly, I have always craved those things, and life has treated me pretty well. It started with one of the all-time greatest childhoods. Born the fifth of six children, I grew up in a small picturesque coastal town about 20 miles south of Boston. Imagine an ocean, rocky coastline, and lots of neighborhood friends who played tennis in the spring, raced sailboats and practiced diving in the summer, and played hockey on frozen backyard ponds in the winter. Ours was an Irish-American immigrant story. My great-grandmother bought a milk cow, which led to another, and another, and voila, a milk business, White Brothers Inc., was born, and within 20 years became the largest dairy in New England. I'm now fifth-generation American, one of nearly three dozen cousins. We all went to decent schools and had summer jobs. I was lucky, and I knew it. But even into this idyllic small-town life, pain and sadness intruded. I grew up seeing plenty of evidence that bad things happened to good people. My friend's father shot himself. Two high school classmates died in a car crash. Another was paralyzed in an accident. Two friends almost died of starvation and another cut his wrists. One hung himself. My siblings and I went to a lot of Irish wakes and funerals. It was all part of the fabric of life, but I wondered, why so much tragedy? Inside our home, my immediate family wrestled with the effects of alcoholism and a broken marriage. Both my grandfathers died before I was born. I remember watching my grandmothers fade to early deaths, one from Parkinson's, the other from drinking and heart failure. There always seemed to be some relative or neighbor fighting diabetes or cancer. How strange, I thought, that no matter how great life was, it was peppered with death and loss. Even as a kid, I asked, why? Why do bad, sad things have to happen? Silence answered. So I thought, I guess life is unfair. Bad stuff just happens. This was a very unsatisfying conclusion. I simply couldn't answer the toughest of life's questions, the why of it all. So I began to ask a different question, how? Given the bad things happen, how did people absorb the blows and move through them? It's a question I've been asking for a long time, and I think I've discovered some answers. They've emerged from knowing and working with remarkable human beings around the world. Hundreds of survivors and friends who have muscled their way through tough times and emerged stronger, wiser, and even grateful for their struggle. We all admire individuals who do more than just, quote, get through tough times. We're awed by those who somehow emerge stronger from crisis with their dignity and grace intact. These people somehow seem more at peace in their crisis aftermath. Can that be you or me? Can we put ourselves onto that list of people who have come through suffering and found a way to really live again? The question becomes, how do we not only survive, but thrive? Is there really a way to grow stronger in crisis? You bet there is. I'm convinced we not only can toughen under pressure, but also soar. Why? Because I did. And I have watched thousands of others transform tragedy into growth. Over the past 12 years, I've made a global study of survivors. I've seen evidence that... Regardless of misfortune and injury, individuals come out on the other side full of life, love, and ambition to do something with their lives. I am inspired to know people all around the world picking up the pieces, rebuilding their lives, and learning to thrive. So how do they do it? Listen up and you'll learn. You'll hear, in their own words, just how they manage to thrive in the face of catastrophe. And as you'll see, it is something they chose to do just as you can choose to do it. Success has more to do with how you think than with how you feel.